Hey, what's going on guys? Comic Games here. You know, like, I have started recording the the previous video and I just, uh, after about two hours, I realized that I forgot to turn on the mic. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, but I needed to drop that. So, uh, but there wasn't really uh, anything uh, about the network in itself, so you didn't really miss that much. So, uh, I'll now quickly try to uh, walk through what I did in the previous video that no one would ever see. Uh, but anyway, it's really, really nothing really interesting there. Uh, so I've just uh, added my mm, CNC uh, GUI and engine to uh, for for remote validation purposes and created uh, a route for for that within my Flask web application. So now we would be able to, so starting from this video, we would be able to use. Uh, the GUI in order to input the moves and also GUI would be used to retrieve the moves if uh, they are kind of like uh, done on the board so that's that's how it's gonna be working actually okay so uh, probably the first thing uh, I would like to show is uh, where did we stop in the previous uh, in the previous uh, video so I'll just comment out my newly created code just just for a while and show you what we did end up with within the previous video not the previous I've recorded but the previous actually published on YouTube and also we'll need the UDP server as well so uh, now I just want to start a flask app so literally they're starting the HTTP service I just say Python 3 app.py and now it's active and also I want to open another terminal and start the UDP server so Python 3 UDP dot uh, UDP server dot pi okay so now we go to the browser and we go into localhost and I just recall the path so board okay uh, board and yeah and game ID and yeah let's let's say the black connects first so we go in here and we have the response from our UDP server so here is the UDP server that uh, has to, uh, so again, like uh, the overall architecture, the most weird networking solution ever by Comac again, for those who didn't yet uh, get how this works or didn't follow the previous videos. So my browser uh, makes a request to HTTP server, uh, which is created using the Python Flask framework. And this is the route that takes uh, the user uh, request. And then it creates uh, a client socket and sends the data to the UDP server that is listening on port 8888 on the local host. And then uh, uh, this client socket retrieves, uh, uh, retrieves the response back from the UDP server, decodes this and sends back to, to the browser. So this is what, th this is, what is happening. So we, we now have that the game we're now playing is the game one. Uh, Red didn't yet connect, uh, black did connect, and no moves in the games, obviously. So this uh, string query parameter is used uh, to initialize uh, the UDP server's uh, state of the game. Now we're, we're doing a single game only, later on uh, I'll alter it to handle uh, several games simultaneously, obviously. But for now, just as a proof of concept, I'm doing uh, with the only single game. So this is regarding the previous video and what I'm supposed to be doing now is I want to uh, so you see like I've been using uh, I've been using the get request so you see like just doing the zero click on the browser command line uh, the browser address line but I want to make this do uh, I want to be able doing this via the asynchronous uh, uh, post request ejects but post calls uh, and I want to make them uh, every time the user makes a move in the GUI. And again, like uh, I'm not going uh, for any move validation on the server side because all the move validation would have been done on the client side. And definitely this is very vulnerable uh, and insecure. This means that it's absolutely trivial to 
break the ongoing game between two players so literally anyone can just uh, s sniff in and just <laughs> make some moves whatever but again like i don't care about this because this is just a proof of concept hobby project i'm doing to learn more about networking in the Kuma Kings way so i think that might be just fine okay so now regarding what i've done uh in the previous video which nobody will, would ever see on youtube because i forgot to uh, turn on my mic so uh i've created so now now i just want to uh i want to for now i just want to get rid of this uh i want to get rid of this route at the moment save and so i've created two routes so the first uh, the root route would be, excuse me, so done something horribly wrong. Mm. Hold on a sec. Sorry. So here we would be able to create new game or join the existing one or pick up from. Uh, the existing boards not sure how is that exactly that would have been done but uh the main thing well let's say we're playing on the board one uh and also the opponent plays there as well so this is the ui that we're supposed to be seeing uh when playing versus opponent so th th uh, this is the copy paste of my uh ukon cnc engine that plays uh with the uh, versus javascript engine purely in the front end so now it can play, it would be responding. So I would be altering this. So first uh, I will just disable the engine. So uh, uh, just, uh, yeah, just kind of like disabling the engine basically. And then I would also uh, disable the option to, uh, for like if you're playing with white pieces, I will disable the option of, uh, touching the black pieces because otherwise you can make moves for your opponent but actually for debugging purposes uh this might be really helpful so i will probably do that uh much later because first i just want to make move for whites send it to the server the http server then it sends to udp server then it, then it uh, goes back and then we'll see like how the stuff goes well not sure how exactly this is going to be working but the very first initial thing i really need to deal with is uh two things so in the ui i want to disable the engine uh actually i can even do this like this go into edit mode yeah this is already enough uh but probably i'll just write a new function to well not sure how, how exactly am i supposed to be doing that but anyway, I want to I want to create a route on the server that would be take uh, uh, taking post requests, not the get requests. So let's test that first. Uh, so board, or maybe I should call it maybe. Uh, yeah, probably, probably this is just fine. So, and the year methods would be equal to post only. And now, if I did everything correctly, it should give an error. Method not allowed. Yeah, this is correct. This is absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, well, also, hold on a sec, I just want to, I just want to disable a couple of things, like bots, because it takes incredibly long, uh, it takes incredibly long to, or, mm, that would, sorry guys, that's a bit of, uh, a little bit of a downside of life coding. Uh, okay, forget this. I just wanted to disable the opening books to not to take ages uh, waiting until it runs. Uh, 
until it gets initialized to make it a little bit more instant but that's not the major disaster at the moment okay so uh, now I need to handle I need to handle the user input so am I running think by default just want to check that out so think so I do it on drop piece yeah so instead of think uh, instead of think I uh, would be uh, calling the function called send move okay and I also need to implement this as well and also here the same so just disable an engine underneath this and send move and now here send move to server and function send move console log and move okay so now every time I move a piece hold on a sec why it's still playing disable cache console and move okay uh can i make illegal moves no i can't this is good can i make illegal moves no i can't this is good yes yeah, so i can make only legal moves this is very nice okay so now the next thing to consider i need to extract the move so mm. Okay, so like edit mode, return, but I just don't remember where did I get the move itself. Mm. Yeah, if I could, all, if I could only remember where where is the move okay here it is here it is if valid valid validate move uh send move and valid and also send move and valid here uh probably yeah this should be the encoded integer already which is good yeah this is good uh yeah this is really good because then on the client we will be able to make it instantly without any hacks yeah this is really good okay i'm sorry guys just uh, i have too many thoughts uh, running in background in my in my brain uh it's another little bit downside of live coding but still it's very interesting okay send move uh, and here the move itself so send move and the move and this should be encoded as an integer so let's have a look let's have a look if the move that is done in the GUI okay this is the move okay this is the response 
good so these are the exact the, these are the encoded moves uh encoded by the engine already validated so we need to, we, we're sure that the moves are correct so no we're not doing uh, some illegal stuff so in this case mm, in this case uh we just want to send these moves to the server yeah that's what what we're supposed to be doing okay so uh, before actually dealing with the UDP, I first first I want to um, board method post. So uh, let's just await all of this socket stuff for a while. Or actually, hold on a sec. I can just uh, so I just want to wait the socket stuff and. For now, I want to return just what what is sent. That should be enough. Mm. Move sent. So just to return what has been sent there. Move sent plus. So user data, not the request args, but in this case, I want the request form. This should be working in theory and actually user data I'm not sure if this is enough we'll see uh, and now and now I want to so I want to send move to the server so jQuery dot post uh, oh my god, if I could only remember the syntax for post, so let's just quickly refresh the memory. Sorry guys, jQuery, if you're not doing something in the for permanently, you just keep forgetting the stuff, so jQuery post. Uh, let's just see like so. Mm. I don't remember how to encode the the the, the request the body no not in not in Ajax form but in this form and this is the callback function okay copy mm. uh, I'm just wondering but hold on a sec where where is uh so this is the callback function and uh, I think I can do it like this. So let's say ID. Uh, I'll hard code this for now and Let's say move. So what I was doing in the browser command line, I will now be doing here, connect and side. Let's say, I just, I just hard code all the stuff at the moment. Later on, yeah, just, changing this I just want a proof of concept mm. Mm. so let's say HTTP server response and response and let's have a look so are you kidding me what's wrong so now when I make a move it should return the move back okay post not found Oh, 
<laughs> obviously I'm sorry uh, so here I need to specify the route uh, that I have here right and again okay so HTTP server responds and it gets parsed as well yeah this seems to be fine in here the server should take care of it as well just slightly be confused why it doesn't confuse why it doesn't print that is the post request but doesn't matter okay so yeah it gives the response which is good so from now on from now on but hold on a sec actually this init stuff uh, it should be on load it shouldn't be it shouldn't be on the move because uh, the connection is established once the user goes to a specific route and with a specific color so if in this case this is kind of red to move in this case this is black and like here we have like red connected here we have the black connected so yeah okay guys i'm sorry uh so well within the send mode that there, there would be something very similar but for now uh, uh, but for now on startup uh, by the way hold on a sec if I just can I not set the bot just wondering and still make moves yeah I can okay so I don't want to set the bot now so I just want to connect to server so first uh, well before all of this uh, before all of this stuff happens well actually no it should be uh, kind of like connecting when we when we come here okay so it now needs to extract uh, so now if let's say we use this board too uh, yeah it's not even found but hold on a sec hold on a sec Okay, I'm sorry, I've been a little bit distracted. So, uh, it's no remember how it's done. Uh, somehow, like type. String ID. And then it needs to get passed, apparently. maybe on the contrary uh, okay so this is the first thing's converter okay and now it should be allowing me to specify different okay different boards so uh i need this window location dot location dot each reference and also yeah I, I probably i can use this site to move uh to specify the actual site to move right 
So something like and side equals to red. Okay. So just to make sure to, to give an idea that this player is actually playing with red pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Not, nothing stops him from typing black here, hitting enter, and making a move for his opponent. Obviously, but. It doesn't matter at the moment. Okay, so now on load here, here I want to let's say can you so log mm, window location dot each reference. Okay, so and to get the ID, so let game ID equals to window location each reference let by the port and take first element and then split by the question mark it always be there and take zero and this should be the game id so literally should print one try to parse this number okay one and then the side uh so let Side. Uh, hold on a sec, just to wait. Any get side side. Well, let's call it player side, just to wait any collisions, uh, any possible collisions. So player side or player color is better. This would be window location each reference split by site do i call it site well actually yeah site site equals like this and this should be printing one and red now Yeah, player color, I'm sorry. Okay, one and red. And now we need to send uh, here and here. Yeah, okay, so now we now here we can send the game ID and here uh, we can say the player color and also I want to be load the last one okay so we have game one sign red and now let's try so it would be black. So it, in it initializes as black. ID is the same. Now let's try to change the ID. So let's say this is the game two. Yeah, it seems to be working. And it's a matter of initial connect. Mm. And then on the server we can handle Okay, it doesn't matter, it's it's too... I just need to focus on something single first. 
Okay, so and, and another little thing that I want to do. So when when the side is black, I want to see the board from the black perspective. So uh, I just need to say. So I want to flip board from side to move perspective. So I can say. So let's use the turner operator. So let's say player player color player color equals to red so in this case we do nothing and otherwise we want to let's make it just zero otherwise we want to flip flip word okay so now it should be from the blacks perspective yeah and if i switch it back to red yeah okay good very good so now we just say game one say we're playing the black pieces oh sorry what have i done uh black p oh what have i done So it would be printing uh, it will be showing flipping the board from the black perspective which is which is good okay and otherwise that would be red okay so and we have this initial connection okay so no need for this stuff anymore okay connect the server uh and you want to define and let's extract extract game id and side to move from current url uh okay from current age reference okay so Now we can acti activate the socket stuff, and this should be working kind of like the same. We probably will need to make some more. Well, actually, I could use alert to make sure that the uh, that the opponent has connected. That's probably it. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's run. Let's run the UDP server as well. Is this UDP server? Okay. So I just get away from here and start from scratch. So now. Uh, if I run it, it should be connected from black perspective and also should be now returning not the HTTP response, but the UDP response. So, okay, sorry guys, getting distracted, d getting distracted because of my cats all of the time. So, uh, oh my God, where did we stop? Okay, so UDP server, right? Uh, nope, right here. Okay, yeah, user data. So this would be this would be the UDP response already. Okay. Okay, so let's see. So we're trying to connect to the new game from from the black perspective now, right? And nothing happens. Why? Why nothing happens? Oh, okay. Nope. Uh, I need to st start the UDP server. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Come on, what's going wrong here? 
Okay, so you, the UDP server crashes, right? Uh, okay, so it crashes. Client data, game error, game ID. Uh, so, so, so. Where is my post request? Okay, I need to call this one game ID, right? Yeah. Let's try again. Let's try again. Okay. HTTP server response, UDP response. So red didn't connect, but black did connect. Okay. And now let's say game one side equal to red. And if we have a look at the console. Yeah, Bose has connected. But as far as we don't really have the logic of uh, retrieving the either the uh, the game moves or this kind of kind of like connection state. So we don't yet do any get requests uh, in that case uh, that's the reason why we actually don't see uh, here we're not aware if it, it is already kind of true or not but anyway here yeah the connection has been established yeah the UDP server closed because that's the current logic for it next it would be uh, uh, starting a new loop to uh, actually process the proper game so now just stopping this just just to make sure that everything is worked and we're done so yeah uh i think i think this is it so what what we have changed from from the previous video basically so now we're sending not instead of a get request we're sending a post request from the ui uh on load uh on loading the board view basically this one and also uh if we have sides and moved black we uh, show the board from the from the black perspective and here we show it this from the red perspective so that's kind of how it works and also the udp server responses with either so here red has been connected and black has been connected but obviously uh the next step would be to uh write a logic to make uh Ajax get requests in the backgrounds uh, in the background walls. Let's say every half a second, maybe every second. It would be also in the cars as far as I'm not going to play bully games, right? So one second might be really enough. And then every uh, every single stuff that changes regarding the either the connection state or well, actually connection can't be lost because the game would be running on the server anyway and I have no idea yet on how to handle uh, the situation if opponent disappears but that's totally different different story already so for now I just need to make sure that I can pose the moves from the UI and I can retrieve the moves from the server to keep track of the state of the game for both kind of peers for red and for black well okay guys so this is it from my side uh, i'm sorry for the most weird approach approach to networking solutions <laughs> by code Mahikin. so that's the way how i learned networking currently and again like as i've been mentioning before many times it's way more important for me to uh do things that i do understand instead of doing things right because if i do things right but i don't understand this doesn't make any sense to me at all and everything I've achieved so far was achieved in this weird but quite pretty nicely working code Mac method. So this is it from my side. Thanks for watching. Uh, until the next time and take care.